Welcome to the Cozy Noah Vibes. I'm your host, Noah. Thank you for choosing to join us. Before we begin, find a comfortable position and set aside all tasks. Let's enter a state of calm together. First, let's take a deep breath. Inhale slowly, then exhale gently. Repeat a few times to deepen and regulate your breath. Now, use your senses to feel every part of your body from head to toe. Notice any tension or discomfort. Simply acknowledge their presence. Don't try to change them. As you continue to breathe deeply, let's gradually release the tension in your body, starting from the head and moving downward, gently releasing each muscle. Feel the comforting lightness, like an invisible comforting hand, gently embracing you. Shift your focus to your thoughts. Don't try to eliminate them. Just let them drift by quietly, like clouds drifting in the sky. You are merely an observer, unaffected by these thoughts. Let's take another deep breath, absorbing the peaceful and serene energy. In this moment, you are safe and tranquil. Anything can wait until tomorrow. Thank you for participating in tonight's scientific relaxation moment. May you have a peaceful night. Now, as you drift off to sleep, let's listen to a story. In mythology, there is a mysterious place that connects heaven and earth, and it is said that there lives a group of monsters that are neither human, ghost, nor god. These monsters possess mysterious supernatural powers and extraordinary strength, and although filled with divine majesty, they also retain the seven passions and desires of humans and the sinister and evil nature. They are irritable and warlike, love fighting and killing, and even fought a fierce war with the god Indra known as the Fire Heaven. They are the fearless gods of war in mythology, the Asuras. Everyone has more or less heard of these battle, loving ghosts and gods, and no matter what work they appear in, they always cause a stir, leaving behind a legend that is both admirable and yearning. But did you know how the Asuras this legendary creature came into being. What different types of Asuras were there in the Asura clan? What extraordinary supernatural powers do they each possess? Let's unravel the veil of this mysterious and fascinating world together. In Indian mythology, the gods headed by the tenth day are usually revered as divas but the meaning of the name Asura is the opposite of Deva, meaning flying in Buddha heaven. It is said that this is because although the Asuras believe in Buddhism and are inherently good-natured, their personalities are completely different. They not only possess the seven passions and desires of humans and the heart of resentment, but are also obsessed with revenge and fighting and use violence to punish criminals. As evil as the evil spirits in purgatory, although their actions may be regarded as just, they cannot really be considered righteous figures after all. In addition, although the Asuras are members of the Buddhist Dharma protectors, the Eight Dragons, they often have doubts about Buddhism, fall into confusion, indulge in worldly feelings, and sometimes are even more human than humans. Therefore, the triple characteristics of human, God, and ghost in Asura make them controversial in the Buddhist world. So how did the Asura clan 
so special come into being. Let's go back to the beginning of creation, when the mountains, rivers, and land were just taking shape. A new moment, a group of immortals from heaven were indulging in games and play on earth. But unfortunately, this happy event led to an unfortunate encounter for a female immortal. She played in the ocean to her heart's content and accidentally swallowed a crystal and silently became pregnant. As thousands of years passed, this pregnant mortal egg continued to absorb the aura of the early days of heaven and earth and finally bloomed into a terrible monster. According to ancient books, this monster was sort all that it could support the sky, and its shoulders were level with Mount Sumeru. She has 990 evil heads and 1,000 eyes that can see everything. Her vision spans tens of thousands of years and thousands of worlds, breaking all taboos, reaching the heavens and the underworld. This terrifying monster is the ancestor of the Asura clan. According to legend, the body of the ancestor Asura was enormous, and when he stood up, he was a full 10,000 feet tall, with his shoulders level with Mount Sumeru. At the same time, he has 909 tiny evil heads and 1,000 eyes that penetrate the heavens and the earth, filled with mystery and fear. However, the legend of the ancestor Asura only appeared at a critical moment. He once single-handedly fought the sixth heavenly demon king who was the most powerful in the demon world and the outcome of the battle is still unknown. In the war between the Asuras and heaven and earth, he mastered the power of the Red Lotus Karmic Fire, which nearly destroyed the tenth day's residence Mount Sumeru. After that, as the Asura clan multiplied, different types, different forms, Asuras with various abilities were born one after another. Although the life experience of the ancestor Asura is very mysterious, the prosperity and growth of the Asura clan is an undeniable fact. In the ocean of the Desire Realm, countless Asuras skill each other every day. They are fierce and warlike, and they are not afraid of death. When Asuras die in battle, their bodies and broken arms dissolve into the sea, turning the sea into a sea of blood filled with a strong stench. But interestingly enough, this sea of blood also seems to have also seems to have a life and consciousness of its own. When an Asura dies in battle in the sea of blood, the flesh and blood of the sea automatically gathers together and slowly hatches into a new and more powerful Asura. Therefore, as long as you are in the sea of blood in the world of desire, the Asuras can live and die and become stronger and stronger in the tens of thousands of times of life and death battles every day. The four Asuras have never been defeated, and they are the most powerful beings in the Asura clan, the legendary for great Asura kings. In Indian mythology, there are many Asura kings, but the most powerful and famous are the Asura for kings. Each Asura king has a legendary experience and story leading different types of Asuras with different abilities. In the Asura clan mythology, Vinzalodo, also known as the Abyss King, stands as one of the oldest and most formidable Asura kings. 
His epithet Garland suggests his possession of nine heads and nine hundred mighty arms, unleashing staggering power akin to a garland when he strikes, catching adversaries off guard. Then Zalodo can traverse the three realms at will, with none capable of impeding his actions, leading the Asura multitude known as the Celestial Asura. They wield the power to summon the Red Lotus Karmic Fire, incinerating all worldly entities while remaining impervious to external forces. And Zalodo left an indelible mark in Asura clan history with his exceptional combat prowess and leadership skills. Another prominent Asura king, Rihu, derives his name from covering owing to his colossal stature among all Asuras, towering and with arms as vast as mountains. He effortlessly obscures the sun and moon with his immense power, disrupting celestial trajectories and inducing phenomena of celestial anomena of celestial anomalies. Often depicted as the most malevolent and sinister of all Asura kings, Rahu leads the livestock Asura, possessing formidable strength to control their size at will, and wield the power to move mountains and fill seas with astonishing force. Legend has it that Rehouse birth, marked by his enormous size and extraordinary power, caused upheaval in the Asura realm, leading to his mother's demise from dystocia. From a young age, Rahu was revered as the paramount leader of the Asura realm, prompting many Asuras to challenge him in attempts to prove their prowess. However, Rahu effortlessly vanquished them all, even consuming them. With time, Ray House Power burgeoned, and he established his own faction of Asuras. Their influence grew exponentially, eventually becoming a dominant force in the Asura realm. However, their tyrannical conduct elicited opposition from numerous Asuras, prompting efforts to unite against Ray House authority in a climactic battle. Rahu succumbed to attacks from multiple Asuras and met his demise. It is said that the Asura King Kambira is one of the most prestigious and powerful kings of the Asura clan. When he was born, he was endowed with amazing power and a wild nature. His shoulders were as wide as a mountain and his fists were as hard as stone. Aror could shatter the earth and destroy the souls of tens of thousands of enemies. Kambir ruled the Asura capital and led the ghost Asura, who had amazing abilities, able to travel freely through the sky, the earth, and the ocean, and switch between the virtual and the real at will. His Asuras often attacked the Divas, using their evil means to assassinate the devil eaters such as Varesvaran, the most evil of the four Asura kings, and greatly exhausted the Deva formation. However, Kumbira was not without rivals. In the Asura clan, there was also a powerful Asura named Gani who had the ability to silence the enemy, which made Kambira a bit of a headache. In the Asura world, the battle between the two caused a sensation and became a legend in history. Legend has it that Kambira eventually defeated Agani, but was injured in battle and has since retired from the Asura throne becoming a legendary figure in the Asura world. The Asura King Veres Maran is one of the four great Asura kings. His name means eternal health, 
implying that he possesses eternal strength and vitality. Feyre's Farin is an ambitious and arrogant Asura king. He is eager to control the entire Asura world and use his powerful strength to rule the world. He led an army called the Asura Heaven Shah, who are proficient in using flame attacks and assassination techniques. However, Feyrave Saren's ambition ultimately lead to his downfall. He challenged heaven and tried to overthrow the rule of the Jade Emperor, but was eventually defeated by the gods of heaven. In battle, he was forced to absorb a lot of the heavenly power of man, making his power extremely unstable. In the end, he was defeated by the heavenly people. His body exploded and his soul was trapped in the abyss, never to be reborn. Feyrae Saren's failure plunged the Asura world into chaos and turmoil. The other Asura kings and their armies fought fiercely for Feyrae Saren's power and territory. After hundreds of years of turmoil and war in the Asura world, it was finally unified by the Asura King Rahu. In the legend, Thaver Sibana was the commander-in-chief of the Asura's battle against the Fourth Heaven. Whenever he captured Adeva General, he would devour him alive and absorb his energy, making his strength stronger. The one he lead is the human Asura, which is the most valiant part of the Asura. When it comes to the most valiant type of Asura, one has to mention the human Asura. This kind of Asura is not only born with three heads and six arms, but also proficient in all the fighting skills in the world, making them extremely fierce in battle. In ancient legends, it was under the leadership of the Asura Asura kings that the Asura crowd fought fiercely with the Divas led by the Tenth Day in the Thirty-Three Heavens. Their battles were thrilling, and the most intense battles owned is the origin of the term Shura Field that we hear today. It can be said that these human Asuras won the awe and praise of the entire Asura world with their unparalleled bravery and fighting skills. Now, as we conclude our time together, may the serenity of this moment linger with you through the night. Remember, you hold the power to create your own dreams. Filled with wonder and possibility, rest deeply. Shmaro holds endless opportunities for growth and joy. Until we meet again, sleep well and embrace the beauty of your own imagination. Good night and sweet dreams. <laughs>